Melissa from Melia NYC, and this is Ronnie and Harvey of Bias and Leon. Peace, y'all. Inspired you guys to start this. So Bias and Leon has actually been around for seven years. Oh, okay. And um, it was, in, we're Haitian. Cool. Uh, we have relatively strong ties to Haiti. Um, our parents did a good job of kind of keeping us connected to the culture. As so did. Yeah, so um, we, uh, we wanted to combine, you know, not a secret that Haiti has a lot of social economic issues. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the biggest issues is that the people just don't have opportunity. A lot of, in particular, a lot of the crafts mm -hmm. uh, that, are, that have been carried on for, you know, hundreds of years are dying out because it just no longer makes sense to instruct your children mm -hmm. in how to do so when it's no longer profitable, can't earn a living. Um, so Ronnie and I wanted to, in one fell swoop, find a way to give opportunity to people, like bring work, and at the same time keep those crafts alive by giving them that work, and in doing so, paying them an actual living wage. Like that was really important to us, um, to be like a fair trade company. Yeah. True, and everything that we do, we try to make it, you know, a bit more hospitable to Haitian culture and kind of jive and gel yeah. together. Yeah, like so. bringing like a modern feel to it. True. Yeah. Bring it into, I guess, 21st century and American e-commerce. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. So you guys are besties. We feel that. We can see that. So. Unfortunately, like that. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, like, I can feel the dynamic and the energy that you guys bring. Mm -hmm. So, like, talk about, like, how you guys, like, motivate each other. Because you guys are very, like, close. You guys are bros. Mm -hmm. Like, how did this all come together? All right. So, <laughs> he moved to my block. Oh, word? Oh, <laughs> You know, I had to take him under the wing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <teaching her. laughs> and you know, and yeah. we just stayed friends. We went to the same high school, okay. and then we stayed friends through college. And then you know, you spend fifteen years, seventeen years with somebody, you're bound to be really close. You know, you know, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of how it all happened, and we both hold each other accountable on most things. So it's. It, it all, I think, works. Cause our personalities gel mm -hmm. in terms of yin and yang in, in a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. I want to say this, like, a lot of people got the misconception that, you know, there's that common saying, excuse me, that you shouldn't, like, do business with friends or family. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, me and him, like I said, we've been friends for, this. I met him when I was 11 years old. I'm, turning 30 this year so that's 19 19 years this year we've been friends and we've been at this for a long time and as you can imagine a lot of money passes hands between us so mm -hmm. we're living proof that that's not true it's not that you can't do friend business with friends or family the deciding factor in whether you can do business with a loved one a family member or a friend is if y'all work ethic is the same and y'all level of accountability is the same you hold, if you yourselves are responsible and you hold each other accountable and you guys got the same work ethic. I want to say that me and Ronnie, we've only gotten this far because the way we built, like we don't make excuses. Like when Ronnie says he's going to do something, he does it. When I say I'm going to do something, I do it. It takes a little time, yeah. but he does it. Yeah. <laughs> like we, 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 we generally do what we say we're going to do and we communicate. If there's issues yeah. or whatever, we communicate. So it's like, we just, we hold each other accountable. And it's kind of like, I be looking at shit, like if I have tasks that I know I have to do, in my head it's always like, get this done, cause I don't want to let Ronnie down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to let the business down. I'm sure he feels the same. Like yeah, we, we, totally. we responsible for each other. Like, yeah. You know, so you, it's totally possible, moral of the story. Like I always say, like, like we've talked about it before, I don't really look out outside of my circle for quote unquote competition. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's I like he raises it. the bar, I raise the bar. I, I raise the bar, he raises the bar. Where it's like, it's not a jealousy thing. It's not like a uber competitive thing, but it's like, I'll be a little better, you be a little better. How did you guys like merchandise the store? Like, what are some of your favorite pieces? Because as we can see, it's like very like, it's very cozy here. It's very warm. It's very bold with the colors. Um, you guys have a lot of like art, which I love. 
and you guys have Jimi Hendrix. So I mean, like, tell us like all behind that. Like, how did you guys create that like aesthetic and like? First, we wanted to create a space outside of just a store and, and commerce itself, a mm -hmm. store that people wanted to be in. People wanted to spend time and sit and chill. It mm -hmm. wasn't directly derived from the need to make money how we developed the aesthetic mm -hmm. and then we worried about the clothes and like finding fire pieces and stuff like that mm -hmm. so it was really about creating a space where both of us would want to be exactly. it's like oh if we were hanging out on a sunday or a saturday afternoon where did we, where would we want to just sit and chill and have mm -hmm. a drink with a friend we wanted to create that sort of comfort first and then we worried about the product later uh to add to that <laughs> um from the jump like our space the space from the jump, we knew that, all right, aside from selling things, because even uh, as far as selling, like we were, we're not a thrift store, per mm -hmm. se. So like our own brand, Bison Leon, those seven years ago was started as a, as a fair trade kind of, we're gonna pay these people, keep these crafts alive, and we're gonna pay them well, we're gonna pay them enough to um, actually sustain a living and send their kids to school their kids to country. Country. Mm -hmm. right yeah. idea of like sustainable fashion mm -hmm. kind of grew on us like we're heavy it's huge in market too right so we we wanted to have a space that sells sustainable so this store is we sell sustainable fashion mm -hmm. so that includes vintage zero waste brands fair trade brands like our own mm -hmm. but right now we have an abundance of vintage but all that other stuff is on the way including a new season of hard things okay. so that's one side we sell things, but from the jump, we knew that we wanted this space to serve as a as a hub to push the culture forward. Black culture, black intellectualism, black economy, black everything, identity, everything. Um, we, are, like I said, are Haitian. We're firm believers in the fact that Haitian history is black history, and that black history is world history. So we want, we had to make a vibe like, all right, this, that has to speak. The place has to speak to that. It has to have lush colors and, and plants that we identify with, I don't know, art, that, that, with blackness, with, yeah. with in, 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 in art. Being vibrant, being alive, yeah. yes. you know, all the things that we are. Exactly. So, and we knew that from the beginning, like we have, the space has to, speak to that effect true that yeah, like i came in i was like oh my god i'm at home like yeah. it feels so cozy it's warm the music you guys are playing like jazz music you guys are playing like r b you also guys are playing like electronic music like it just feels very like homey and very cozy and welcoming and that's the biggest thing about having like a business especially when it's a black owned business you just wanted to feel inviting um would you guys consider yourself like black entrepreneurs you know being business owners this is not my first foray into the business world so it's it's something that's been a part of my life and he's had his own projects as well so it's something that we con we constantly do mm -hmm. and it's part of just our i guess our dna at this point to just be self-starters and so yeah i would i would consider us black entrepreneurs but i think that word is very tricky because i think it's overused mm. so why do you say that because a lot of people use it and they like they don't really have a business they have a hobby in terms of black entrepreneurship mm -hmm. what i mean by that is essentially having a business that generates revenue and which you take seriously because i feel that a lot of especially young black people we will say oh you know i have this going on or that going on but it's not something that you pour your heart and soul into that it's not like a, a like do or die kind of thing. It's like, oh, you know, I do it just to do it. It's not like, oh, this is gonna pay my bills. This is gonna like be my legacy. Mm -hmm. This is gonna define my life. So I think that's what separates from a hobby and like a full on business when it, it becomes its own entity, its own person. So that's what I mean, the difference, at least in my mind, between black entrepreneurship and being an entrepreneur and being a black hobbyist. <laughs> that's what you think. That's that's entirely de definitive of entrepreneur, uh, an entrepreneur versus a creative hobbyist, let's say. It's just the amount of consistent work ethic. Exactly. Because the creative, the creative hobbyist has spurts of mm -hmm. consistency, but, well, spurts of 
high work ethic and spurts of interest and passion and energy and money that they put into that thing. But then it dips and then it remains low for a while and then it may spurt again. So their interest wanes. Mm -hmm. So I would say like that's like the difference whereas an entrepreneur, a, a, an entrepreneur in the truest sense keeps that the, the like an unwavering sort of dedication like a drive. A drive. Continues moving forward. Mm -hmm. Sometimes takes two steps, sometimes runs, sometimes only takes one step, but it's ever forward. And it's ever forward towards the manifestation of that vision.